Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back for it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Hello there. Welcome to Book Talk. I'm Irene Concilia. Philip Schlager a former copywriter, sports writer, and playwright has written a wonderful coming-of-age novel titled, Mickey Mantle Doesn't Eat Broccoli. Let me ask you, who were your childhood heroes? If they were Superman, the Lone Ranger, Annette Funicello, and Mickey Mantle, then you probably came of age during the 1950s today commonly referred to as the good old days. Yes, growing up in the 50s, most every kid who loved baseball loved the Bronx Bombers. They were such a dominant team, winning five World Series in a row, with powerhouse players like Whitey Ford, Yogi Berra, Phil Rizzuto, and of course, Mickey Mattel. And Mickey was the best of the best, who in 1956 was the American League's MVP, home run leader, slugging leader, and run scored leader, winning what is known as the Triple Crown. So it's not surprising that every kid who played baseball wanted to be Mickey Mantle and 13-year-old Philip Morris Kleinman was no exception. Philip, or Skippy as he was called, loved the Mick. But his chances of actually seeing him play in Cincinnati where he lived were probably nil. The Cincinnati Reds played in a different league for goodness sake and would most likely never play against the Yankees. Yet, where there's a will, there's a way. After all, didn't the Magic 8-Ball say he would meet Mickey Mantle this year? And we all know that the Magic 8-Ball is never wrong. So with that as assurance, Skippy set out to make his impossible dream come true. First, there was the Esso's Mickey Mantle Tape Measure Home Run Derby Contest, where the grand prize winner got to be the Yankees' bat boy in the last game of the season. Okay, that was a long shot and involved a little luck, but with fingers crossed, anything was possible, right? Then the golden opportunity to see an exhibition game with the Yankees playing their farm team came along. Unfortunately, there was a small catch. Was it worth it for Skippy to risk ruining his reputation by going to the game with the homeliest girl in eighth grade? You can bet your Mickey Mantle rookie card it was, and he did. Another thought was to invite Mickey to his bar mitzvah, but that idea was vehemently rejected by his mother. Undaunted, he appealed to a higher power, namely Ann Landers. He wrote her a heartfelt letter asking for advice on the proper protocol for arranging a meeting with his hero. But did she write back? Nope. Still, maybe his favorite relative, eccentric Uncle Harold, who lived in the Big Apple, might have a way of snagging a couple of tickets to a game in Yankee Stadium. Hope springs eternal, as they say. No, 13 was an awkward age at best for poor Skippy. What with hormones and acne and peer pressure and pretty girls, 
a boy on the cusp of manhood, had only one thing he could count on for certain, and that was baseball and Mickey Mantle. This book is a great read and laugh out loud funny. Written in the first person from Skippy's point of view, it's a coming of age story about a kid who loved the Lone Ranger, Annette Funicello, and Mickey Mantle. But it's also a witty, clever satire that pokes fun at our obsessions and conventions. And it's a smart social commentary about life in the 50s, which we like to remember with such fondness. So if you're in the mood for a humorous, nostalgic look back at the good old days, then I highly recommend Mickey Mantle Doesn't Eat Broccoli by Philip Schlager, and I give it five stars. Until next time, I'm Irene Concilia. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I never get back for it's root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame for it's